So that was being trolled um, a lot. And I, I noticed more and more that uh, all of the narrative was against Christianity and not really against any of the other religions. And so that sort of led me then to yeah. decide to look at why 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 Christianity so bad? Why not uh, Judaism or why not Islam or why not any of the others? And uh, I decided, well, I haven't really ever read the Bible. Uh, not all, not properly. I've sort of looked at it, know a little bit about it, but I've never actually read it from start to finish. So I made a, a resolve to read it from start to finish. Sort of halfway through, I was realizing more and more and more that what was happening uh, wasn't new in history. In fact, the entire story of the Old Testament is pretty much people um, mm. uh, listening to God and, uh, and agreeing to do what he tells them and then turning away and doing lots of horrible things and then God punishing them and I got again and again and again. And so I realized that um, the Christianity was what was needed. Like it was the turning away from God, from, from believing in God that was actually causing all of this evil that I was seeing all around me and all of this agenda was only possible because so many people had turned away from God. So I realized then that this is the, the, the solution is everyone has to turn back to God. The only problem I faced was I didn't actually believe that God existed. But so <laughs> I've, got, I've got the solution and then the problem and the problem is kind of me. Hey guys, welcome to the Don't Be Deceived podcast. We take that from Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and this is our sixth podcast and we are back with the wonderful, beautiful Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hey, Claudia. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. There's a slight audio delay. Hopefully we figure that out. Okay, so our guest today is Stephen Wells. He is relatively well known for um, certain books he's written, which I'll get him to introduce because I don't want to mess it up. He was formerly an atheist. For as long as I've known him, he has been an atheist. And as of, I think, a year and a half to two years ago, he became a born-again Christian. And it made me teary because I even posted about it on my Facebook page. Here is the lovely and wonderful Stephen Wells. Hello, Stephen. Uh, hello. Good to be here. Yay. God, ble God bless you both. Thank oh, you. Thank you. God bless. I would like you to mention the books that you've written. One is about C-19 and the other one was about something else. Do you mind mentioning them? And I'll add them to the description box below when this is published. Yeah, so the first the first one I wrote uh, was a book called Confessions of a Climate Change Denier, uh, which and then the second one was called The Great Coronavirus Swindle. So, mm. and um, the the both available on all Amazon, but the coronavirus one has been censored and is now called The Great Censored Swindle on Amazon because you're not allowed to mention the the c word. I love That's, it. Yeah. Got in trouble so many times in my life for saying the C word. <laughs> Sacked from so many jobs. Is that Claudia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, God, I'm in so much trouble for saying that name. It depends in which circles, my friend. <laughs> Don't uh, uh, Claudia. Mm. Okay, so... um. I don't know how much you know about this new podcast we're recording, but essentially Don't Be Deceived probably gives you some indication that it's about like not following the worldly narrative and not being deceived. But for a while, you were deceived. You were an atheist. You followed some sort of a narrative there. And um, uh, this particular show will focus mostly on Christian testimonials, but then we branch out into other subjects. And clearly you've written about climate change and C-19, you know, two lovely C words. So we'll, we'll probably be able to um, veer into that. But did you want to talk about your life as an atheist, why you were an atheist, and what made you turn? And then along the way, Lauren and I will interrupt you and ask you questions. Go for it. Uh, I was probably an atheist just because that's what um, that's how we grew up. Um, there was not much God uh, in my life. Um, 
I had a brief period of uh, being at a Church of England school uh, where there was a bit of God involved, but um, yeah, I was only between the ages of sort of eight and ten, so it didn't really stick or mean much to me other than that was sort of something that we did. Um, so yeah, it was more uh, a product of uh, of the conditioning of the society, really. Um, so that's that's why I was an atheist. Okay. Is there a reason? Did you mind? Okay, then then get into the story as to what slowly made you change your mind. I've obviously heard this story before on our drive, but I would like everyone to hear. Yeah, so um, around about 2013 was when I first realized, well, not. I'd had issues with the Iraq war. I had issues with 9-11. Um, I'd always been sort of anti-establishment in my uh, in my views. Um, but 2013 is when I realized that uh, the whole climate change narrative was a lie from start to finish from the from the physics through to the politics. And that sort of sent me down like a real sort of rabbit hole in terms of, uh, of who was behind the lie. Uh, and then one thing kind of led to another. So by the time we're getting into the COVID-19 lies, um, I sort of knew more about who was doing what, and it was the same people doing the same things. And with the, um, with the program of, of COVID and the various agendas that went with it, um, I kept finding out that there was sort of a trolling of the book of revelation in terms of, a. Uh, uh, a pre-rapture view so there was a pre-rapture there was a trolling of the pre-rapture rites if you like so those who believe that um uh that jesus is going to return anytime soon and all of these things that are happening to us are signs and wonders that the uh that the antichrist is coming and um we're all going to be uh, whisked off into the sky before the real tribulation uh, comes there was a movie i think with um uh, James Franco and Seth, whatever his name is, some the some, uh, Green Seth or wrote, yeah, something like that. Some some American, one of, them. one of them, really bad, really bad comedian that, that was basically focused on that view of um, that interpretation of uh, of of the Book of Revelation, where we all kind of get whisked into the air and get saved from the tribulation, and then all of the uh, the rest of the world goes to hell in a handbasket, and we all. Uh, either take the mark or get our heads chopped off. Um, so that was being trolled um, a lot. And I, I noticed more and more that uh, all of the narrative was against Christianity and not really against any of the other religions. And so that sort of led me then to yeah. decide to look at why. Why why Christianity so bad? Why not uh, Judaism or why not Islam or why not any of the others? And uh, I decided, well, I haven't really ever read the Bible, uh, not all, not properly. I've sort of looked at it, know a little bit about it, but I've never actually read it from start to finish. So I made a, a resolve to read it from start to finish. Sort of halfway through, I was realizing more and more and more that what was happening uh, wasn't new in history. In fact, the entire story of the Old Testament is pretty much people um, mm. uh, listening to God and, uh, and agreeing to do what he tells them and then turning away and doing lots of horrible things, and then God punishing them, and I got again and again and again. And so I realized that um, the Christianity was what was needed. Like, it was the turning away from God, from, from believing in God, that was actually causing all of this evil that I was seeing all around me, and all of this agenda was only possible because so many people had turned away from God. So I realized then that this is the, the, the solution is everyone has to turn back to God. The only problem I faced was I didn't actually believe that God existed. But so <laughs> I've got I've got the solution and then the problem and the problem is kind of me. And uh, can I just suggest here? Sure. Why? Why did you believe um, that God didn't exist? How did that, like, was it based on the science that you were taught or what was the the thing that that uh, made you think that God didn't exist? Is it one thing? Is it more than one thing or is it? 
just upbringing generally. I mean, I'd, I'd gone down the Darwin route. I'd gone down all of the science route. You know, I'd written a book right. on, on the physics of climate change. So um, I was heavily into physics. You know, I was I was questioning the Big Bang already, um, but not on a um, on a godly view. I just just realized that Einstein was full of crap. Um, so yeah. and that the whole uh, space time curvature was was nonsensical. So I was. The, the science side of things, I, I I was sort of questioning. I was looking at alternative sciences, but um, you know, belief in specifically all of the miracles. It, it's not so much like there couldn't be a god, but there's all of the sort of metaphysical things in the Bible. All of the miracles: Jesus walking on water, Jesus rising from the dead, um, you know, turning water into wine, feeding the five thousand. You you name it. There's there's a few. There's quite a few miracles. You have kind of got to get to sort of say. You got to suspend your disbelief and say, "Okay, I'm just going to trust that this happened." When all of my upbringing mm-hmm. in science says it, it's not possible for any of this to have happened. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've got I've got a little bit of sort of uh, coincidental superstition. You know, things happen in my life, a few odd things, but I always put them down to sort of sciencey, naturalistic explanations. Um, so, yeah, what I was were those this- things? Good, good question. Uh, well, 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 you know, I, I I thought I saw a ghost when I was at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Um, I, I woke up in the middle of the morning. Okay. And there was a woman standing, a woman standing in front of me. Um, wow. But by the time I woke my, by, by the time I shook shook the uh, the lady who was to be my first wife, who was next to me sleeping, went, Nicola, wake up, wake up, we're gone. She was gone. So it, you don't question, well, did I see it or, did, or was I just <laughs> waking up from a dream? You know, it was a map over yeah. here. Yeah, was it? It was. You know, I'd literally open my eyes first thing in the morning and see this thing in front of me. It could have been, who knows what it was. But I have that. That's my only real sort of experience. I have a bit of experience of of feeling like a presence and a and a, and a calm. Uh, back when you know my first marriage broke down, I was close to committing suicide, and I was sort of standing in the middle of uh, um, Scarborough Beach in Perth. Um, this yeah. at midnight and I was up to my waist deep in water and I was about to swim to Rottnest or, you know, I was just oh, going to wow. swim. I was just going to swim and keep on swimming. And even though either I made it to Rottnest and lived or more likely because it was just about 20 swimming, kilometers. Swimming. Just swim, swimming. swimming. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry. I had, Sorry. I had, I, I had a, I had a list of little, uh, you know, I sort of sense a presence come over me and, uh, then of of feeling the beauty of the world even the beauty of the pain that i was going through um which kind of stopped me in my tracks and um praise god praise god but you know that i didn't attribute that to god until after i started believing in him so um there are only two things my mum had a few things happen to her that you know i got from testimony from her when my, when my father died or, or when uh she was engaged to be married again and um Unfortunately, the the man uh, he he crossed the road. I was about two years old. I was, I was too young to know him. Uh, he crossed the road and and got knocked over by a car and killed again. Uh, and my mother um, sensed the very moment of his death and knew that he died. Like even though it was miles away. So there's those there's those kind of things that I was like, okay, there is there is stuff beyond my understanding. I just wasn't putting it down to God. So that yeah. other thing. So in the end, uh, when I'm sort of faced with this choice, I've got the sort of the solution. I know that this is what society needs if we're going to defeat these evil buggers. And then, okay, but for that to work, it's kind of got to start with me. Mm. Like it's you know, if, if I'm going to go and preach that, that we all need to turn back to God, then I kind of need to do it myself. And so I was stuck for a short while trying to work it out. And um, I was reading through... Uh, Psalms, and I misread them because it was reading the Old King James, and it's very, very easy to nod off when you're trying to read through the Old King James. And um, so I misread something and uh, got this this sort of message through the text, even though I was, it, I'd never found it again because it, was, it, was, it wasn't actually in the text, which was just um, choose. Choose to believe. Just make a decision, make a choice. So I thought, uh, it's actually kind of quite simple. I just simply declare it, fake it till I make it, and just basically choose to believe that's... despite all my doubts. And so that's how I got into it, was I just basically made a decision. I was going to choose to believe in stuff that I didn't think was possible. 
I'm just going to wow. choose. I don't, I don't choose to believe. I don't know how it's happened. I, I I can't explain how it's happened, but I'm just going to choose to affirm that it's happened anyway. And then from from making that decision, um, I've then had like personal things happen to me that just go beyond coincidence. That um, I'm, it was like like God was basically saying to me, um, okay. Well done for making the choice. Now I'm going to reward you with actual proof that you've been asking for all of these years, and I'm not going to give you because you were such a, a stubborn bugger. You were a stubborn bugger for fifty odd years, but now that you've humbled yourself a bit, here's here's a bit of here's a bit of personal proof for you, a bit of uh, things. So I've had a a few things happen since then, which sort of uh, have made me actually believe believe rather than just pretend to believe, if you like. So there you go. Thank you, you make it. Yeah. Do you think, do you think, Stephen, that it's possible to arrive at the conclusion that there is a God and what you did through logic and analysis? Or do you think it's not possible and that you have to make a leap of some sort, even though through logic and analysis, you could look at books of the Bible mm -hmm. that corroborate events in history. You can look at like the book of Habakkuk and see the coins and the king that ruled at the time. Um, or do you think um, no matter how much evidence pointed towards the Bible, you still needed to make a, a leap of faith? Do you understand the question? Is that a weird question? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I made I made a leap of faith in to, to choose to believe some because at, at the end of the day, there is always going to be that stumbling block of, well, I know that people can't write, live, rise from the dead. And it's no different, actually, when you when you read through the Bible to the Sadducees, you know, they didn't believe in a resurrection. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, yeah. it's it's not like it's new, unique to our scientific times. You know, everybody knows you can't walk on water. Everybody knows you can't rise from the dead. Everybody knows that these things can't happen. And so that that skept it was an awareness of the laws of nature. Yeah, everybody's got awareness of what physical reality is. So to transcend yeah. physical reality, to choose to believe that there is something transcendent beyond it, you you, you absolutely have to at some point make some kind of, uh, you know, with me, it was, wasn't was really a leap of faith where it's suddenly, you know, you hear all of these stories about these, uh, all these testimonies of people who, it's like the Blues Brothers movie. They walk into a church, a light shines down. James Brown is singing. He goes, yes, I believe. Oh, my God. You know, and he's start dancing in the pews you know that yeah. it wasn't like that for me it was uh you know I, I i wish you know it would be wonderful to have that kind of sort of sudden sense of the holy ghost filling me and light pouring out of every orifice but um no it was it was just a simple uh choice i just decided that that's what i needed to do. this is what the world needs therefore i have to choose to believe if the world's going to be fixed it's going to start yeah. with me and and from there I, I think God rewards people who take that leap. You know, like uh, I haven't had yeah. many signs and wonders uh, for probably about a year now. But when I first made that choice, you know, God was showering me with signs and wonders. You know, and yeah. it, that, 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 that may not happen to the next person. The next person may go, oh, well, I'll believe and I'll see if signs and wonders come. Well, you know, I wasn't looking for signs and wonders. They just, I was rewarded with them. I was rewarded with 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 um, with experiences to to bolster my my new and fledgling faith. Um, well, not even faith at that point, just a decision. I was given faith because I trusted enough to make the choice, uh, and I'm blessed in having uh, been given personal experiences like that. As was with my wife, who who made the decision uh, to become a Christian with me. Um, Lovely. But yeah, it's uh, faith is small as the mustard seed. That's all it takes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> solid, solid. And so, can I ask, because you're the first person in this new podcast that I've brought on who identifies as a white nationalist, does that get in the way of faith, or do you feel like, biblically speaking, it supports your faith? Um, I'm sort of on the fence on this issue, as you all well know. I'm not a civic nationalist, nor am I an ethnic nationalist. I'm somewhere in between. I see the logic for both arguments. Biblically speaking, um, how do you reconcile that, or do you not need to because you feel like it completely corroborates your perspective? Let, what are your thoughts? It, it certainly corroborates uh, with the Christian perspective in this age. Okay. So when I look at what 
you know, when I look at what the the people who believe in the other side, Satan and or you know globalism and all the rest of it, yeah. there is there is an agenda to basically um, mix all of the races, make mm -hmm. us all get rid of the, you know they they say it's 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 very Orwellian because they say multiculturalism, but it's the exact opposite. The plan mm -hmm. is to get rid of all cultures and just have a slave yeah. class, the elite class. And so, um, yeah. so certainly, uh, I think people need to become uh, more tribal again. That doesn't mean to say you need to hate other other tribes. Uh, On a news? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's you, you're gonna get just due to the, 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 the nature of of the evil that's being done. You're going to get people reacting evilly. That that's yeah. That's unfortunate, but that's, that's just all. You you read that in the Bible as well, and so you know what I've been doing with the sort of the nationalist side of things is trying to steer the nationalists towards believing in Christ, because yeah, land that... Christ, you you've got the law, you've got the law of nations, you've got the law of um of integration, you've got the law of of how somebody becomes goes from one tribe and integrates into another tribe. You've got in, in Deuteronomy, you know, it says, you know, uh, the third generation, I can't remember the exact quote, but it's like the third generation, uh, you, if somebody who marries into the, into the, into the tribe uh, will become part of the congregation in their third generation. So it's like, it's yes, you can marry into somewhere, but it takes a generation or two to gain, to really gain the trust, to really become part of that new culture that you've you've married into whereas what we've got at the moment we've got it's, it's not even normally like pre-world war ii the only reason that somebody would be mo really moving to another country is either it's been colonized you know it's it's got they have this color the, the, you've got the uh, the empire thing going on but mainly it was just because you you've got somebody who's traveling somewhere and they meet someone they marry them and they bring them back in that's really the only reason you, this is like since the late 1960s is the first time we've really had like a a government program an intergovernmental program to transport millions and millions of people from one culture and stick them in another culture and mm -hmm. it's it's purely done to divide and conquer you know so um uh, and it, and it, like you know, I look at you know uh, you know Britain at the moment you know where where I'm from and and you know that it's a, it's a, been, it's completely different, isn't it, from the British? Well, you know, there's, well, it is. You know, there's, there's four, there were forty five million people in Britain when I, uh, when I was born, and they were nearly all British. There's now sixty seven yeah. million people, still only forty five million of them are British. So they've 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 suppressed the birth rate, and they've got twenty seven million people who are not British, and in places like London or you know where I lived for a while in Birmingham there's there's hardly a british person left and so it, it's 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 evil what they're doing and so obviously i oppose anything that's evil for sure i i would i would like to also make mention that when you go on sites like google and you write white couple for some reason it's black and white whereas when you write black couple you'll see black and black when you write mixed couple you'll see all different things but so there is certainly what what appears to be um some sort of an agenda there but biblically speaking, wouldn't you say that the story of Miriam uh, getting leprosy because she spoke out against Moses' wife being Ethiopian, wouldn't you say that that is an argument that works against your your biblical argument? Because God is like, well, you know, you're not going to disrespect this Ethiopian woman. He is leprosy. There's punishment. So in a sense, isn't God anti... I'm not saying you're a racist. I know that nationalism and racism doesn't exactly equal the same thing. Lauren is also not one of those people that gets offended by that kind of stuff but just generally speaking doesn't that argument work against the biblical argument well as i said that there's you know there are there are exceptions all the way through the bible you know there is the there is the basic uh premise with the, there is the basic sort of ideal and then there are all the way through the bible there is exceptions to the rule the the big a bigger a much bigger um, exception to the to that rule is that is Ruth, so the book of Ruth, 
uh, Ruth yeah. is a Moabite. Ruth, Ruth the Moabite. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so Ruth, Ruth is not only um, of a different race, she is of a race which has been explicitly forbidden by God uh, for the Israelites to uh, bring into the congregation. Mm. But there's a, there's, a, there's a few caveats that happen. First of all, um, the um, Naomi's uh, first husband, uh, they go into Moab uh, to do things that they're, you know, to basically make a life in, in, in Moab, which was against, which they shouldn't have done. Husband dies. The, uh, the son of, uh, of Naomi uh, marries uh, the Moabites. He dies. So he is punished by God, but then Ruth, Ruth herself, when when Naomi says, you know, go go back into your own land, she says, no, I I will I will live and I will die with you. She basically prostrates herself before Naomi and says, your God will be my God. Uh, if if anything happens to you, let me die. I I will put my loyalty purely onto you. And and all the way through the Bible, there is um, there is this. Uh, this forgiveness from God, there is this, if, if yes, you, you have been cursed, but if you, if you humble yourself before me, you, you can be forgiven and you can be brought in. Um, so uh, Ruth goes back with Naomi, um, absolutely does everything possible for the, uh, for the love of Naomi, even basically gives up her child and lets it be Naomi's child, even though it's uh, uh, Ruth who's had it. And three ge three generations later, no, three generations, David is born, and David not only is accepted into the tribe, he becomes king of Israel, and through him, obviously, Christ is born. Yes, yeah, because Jesus came from the line of David. That's true. Yeah, so it's 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 about biblical standards, and then there is also um, grace. God's grace. So God's grace is all the way through the, the Old Testament. It's not just in the New Testament. God's grace is always there. You have the law, and then you have God's grace, which overrides the law, because the law is there not to be like the Pharisees, something to to basically say, oh, you must cling to the law, and if you even, you know. No, the law is there for two purposes. One, that you love God with all of your heart, and two, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh -huh. That's the purpose of the law. Mm -hmm. And unless you understand the purpose of the law, then you know, then then you risk going into this hatred of other nations rather than the love for your own people, which is where having nations is supposed to be. The reason you are you are mainly on the whole recommended by God to stay within your own tribe and marry within your own tribe is because God gave you your tribe. God gave you your your race. God gave you your skin color. God gave you your culture, and He wants you to honor it and protect it and nurture it. Uh, whilst at the same time, He wants you all to come through Christ, and so that you can also love your love your friend in Japan and love your friend in <laughs> Africa, you know, and and love everybody else because, you know, Japan at the moment has just done a terrible thing and opened itself up to multiculturalism. It's, it's it's tragic, you know. Have I really? To... I've never yeah. heard that about. That. Yeah, it's just oh. I read like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, they're well, opening up the, great, but... they're, they're opening up the borders and they're going to flood Japan with with. Like, they're going to make Japan like like England. Um, and, I, I think, and they protected I, I think, it so far. I know, and it's tragic because like who you go if you go to Japan. You want to see Japanese people. You want to see Japanese culture. Yeah, if I want to see Sudanese people, want, yeah, yeah. I'll go to Sudan, not to Japan. Exactly, exactly. I understand. And so, yeah, so this is what it's all about, really. It's so, yeah. I mean, bringing the the message of Christ to the to the nationalists is is probably the the most important thing in terms of this argument, because obviously the 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 nationalists have, uh, they start off from a position of being under threat, being under attack. And so the the natural reaction is to get angry and to fight back and to get all of this hatred and to say you know you know the n word and all the rest of it. Um, but if we're going to win, if we're going to beat these people, then we've got to put that anger and give that up to God. You got you got to you got to put that you got to put that up to God, and yeah. and and then get back to what put, started this thing in the first place because 
if the West, if the white people, if all of these white nationalists had, had not realized that it was because our race, not the Jews, not the blacks, it was our race who turned away from God, because we turned away from God, that this is happening to us. And it's not going to be fixed until the white people turn back to God, until we get rid of our own apostasy and our own sin. Only then will we be able to, you know, confront this issue properly and confront it with scripture and God behind us. Would you say that in terms of puritanical speaking, in terms of pur puritanical thinking, that a true conservative, which is a label that I actually didn't, that I've not identified with for a long time, I always say that I'm right-leaning. I no longer say I'm conservative because what have we really conserved? But anyway, would you say, no, exactly. A true conservative would be a little bit more collectivist and a little bit more racially pure. Would you think in your understanding of that term, that a conservative would be also conserving uh, culture and racial identity, as you do. Well, no, because I mean the the problem with with conservatism is it's it's a it's a retreating ideology. Maybe. It's it's an ideology of retreat. So conservatism never wins back what it's lost. Oh yes, only, I agree with that. That's true. Know, it yeah. Only, it only ever tries to hold on to what it's still got. Yeah, so, that's you, accurate. You know, so, yeah, you need a you need a, a rest a restorative. You know, you, I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a restoration man. I always wish, wish to restore God's law again, God's countries again. You know, we 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 had it. Christendom expanded all through Europe, and it got in in and over time, all of the paganism and all of the you know, most of the violence and most of the injustice was was it was slowly being you know it was it was gradually being stripped away, and we were getting yeah. to this you know wonderful uh, you know wonderful nations and wonderful societies and civilizations that we were building through God through belief in God, and then we turned away, and like we've got to get that back. It's it's no good just saying I need to hold on to what's left. Yes, that's, that's a that's fair point. A, yeah. I have a question. What moving forward with the way that you're thinking? I I agree with a lot of it, but what do you do with people like me? I mean, I don't really belong anywhere. Yeah, she's, <laughs> I'm she's a beautiful. Queen. Look at her. Just look at her. Thank you. Work. What do what do you do with people like like us, like me? Uh, in the in the I'm mixed too. Uh, well. There's, there's no need to do anything with you. We, we, we turn back to God, and we, we then, you know, we, we then basically, um, like, like as, no, you, what you're basically asking is, if I ruled the world tomorrow, what would I do? Yeah, that's basically the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, I, if, somebody, if, if the Lord, if the, if the, if the Lord God came down and anointed and put a crown on my head and says, "You are now the, uh, the representatives of Jesus Christ for Australia," get to work. Make yeah. things better. Uh, uh, you are you are a uh, Christian dictator of Australia. Um, well, first of all, anybody who's here, it's not their fault. <laughs> you, know, you didn't you didn't commit the sin. You know you you didn't you, you weren't the one with the agenda, and so it's 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 the sin of what the uh, sin of the, the sin of miscegenating. No, no, the the sin oh. of, of of the of the globalists. The oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Who, who brought in people on mass? You know. Yeah, um, no, fair, fair point. So you know, it's it's taken, you know, fifty. It's basically since the end of the Second World War. So you, you you're talking eighty or nearly eighty years now that this has been going. It's it's not an overnight fix. It's it's not like, mm. and and what. Uh, and how the world is restored, um, you know, that will depend on when it is restored and by whom. Um, my my biggest fear is that it won't be, you know, restored through somebody of faith um, with love in their heart. It will 
basically be like the end of Babylon or the end of the Assyrian Empire, where basically you get God using one bunch of um, of pagans to destroy and punish another bunch of pagans. Um, lots of blood and lots of mm. lots of horror, lots of things like that. So that's why it's all the more important to to basically get as many people back to God as quickly as possible. Mm. Um, but if I, you know, if I did have a magic wand and I, I, I would, you know, I would, I would probably look at the policies of Enoch Powell, um, who, you know, in the late 1960s and early 70s, were basically saying, "Well, we basically first of all we just stop bringing more people in." Just for a start, a moratorium, a moratorium on immigration, you know, and all of the family migration and everything is just, just stop. Um, you then give incentives for people who want to return home because they came over to Australia thinking it would be this wonderful place and realize that it's not, and then they've got no money to go back. You let that happen, um, and then you just you, you just got to give it time for healing. You got to give it time for healing. But, um, you know, each new generation uh, can decide. Like at the moment, you've got these these people who are like second, third generation uh, aboriginals who are more, more white than me, who are claiming... Yes, but they don't claim uh, the, the white side. They don't on the white side. The um, white side is well, putrid. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. you know... Interesting. Yeah, what, what, what do you want to be? You know, choose. You know, mm. if, if, it's, if it's going to become a question of conflict, then choose. And if you choose uh, the, the different one that the society that you're living in, then we'll help you go and live somewhere where you can live with the people you want to live with. Mm. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because at the moment we are so far away from, you know, rectifying this. We, you know, we're, at the moment we don't even people aren't even acknowledging that this is an issue. It's just starting to happen in France. It's just starting to happen in Sweden. It's just starting yeah. to happen in England. Um, yeah. And so the... the, the no, I, I is... agree with a lot of what you're saying. I, I think there is a, there's a huge problem with, uh, with globalization, but then it's, it's a point of contention as well because, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, who you marry, for example, that's, that's really challenging. I mean, some people just can't, they can't help fall in love with someone of a different race or color or, yeah. you know, whatever. Uh, what do you do with that? I mean, my family story is certainly that that case. Like, we, it was illegal in South Africa for yeah. uh, white people to marry people of color. And so then they had all these, these You're illegal. <laughs> illegitimate marriages. Um. And all these children came out that were all different colors, you know? So um, you couldn't stop people from doing that, uh, you know, by their nature, but legally it wasn't allowed. Uh, so, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I don't know how how this will work, so the how going forward is going back. It's, it's yeah, it's interesting. The problem, the problem with 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 South Africa, the the mistake that they made was that they they basically used blacks for cheap labor. Yeah. So mm. had had South Africa um, dug its own diamonds and picked its own cotton, mm. then that issue of two cultures intermarrying would not be. Um, you know, it would be less prevalent. Well, it would be less prevalent because it basically, you know, the, um, the the Zulus would be living in their country. The whites would be living in their country. And yeah, separatism. Um, it's what Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, um, they're all basically saying, you know, we don't want segregation. We want separation. We want our own country. We want to live among our own kind. Yeah. And then... And then you basically can have biblical law because then you can have situations where if you want to marry, yeah, you 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 go and marry, but you you don't get. Uh, so like, um, take take the Book of Ruth again for for uh, uh, the go to um, thing. Um, Ruth's children and Ruth's grandchildren 
don't get uh, come back. she'll come back don't yeah, don't get to hold positions of authority in Israel David okay. does because you've got three generations worth of marrying into the tribe yes I understand what you're saying um and because you have separate nations and people are properly in separate nations then the number of times that somebody does fall in love or situations do come along is greatly reduced so it, it's now a, it now is a personal thing mm. it's now it now is a personal choice it's not a it's not a group choice which affects the entire group because it's it's occasional because circumstances and laws have made it occasional and don't make it, you know, almost inevitable, if you like. So in your mind, if if we were relatively purists and each collective was still separated, but it happened every now and then, do you think the attitude towards it would be would be like discussed or do you think it would be looked at a little bit better because most people for the most part respected the the separatism as it was with a few caveats do you think people would be treating them like no you're not allowed to eat this restaurant or do you think um under the understanding that you and i have of what you're saying it would have been treated we would still treat those people like people that would that would depend on the on the laws and the society that you have mm. if you've got a christian society then yes it's more acceptable there will always be suspicion mm. um but there is what you don't have, which we've got at the moment, is the sense of threat. The sense of existential threat from invasion, what we're getting at the moment. So uh -huh. that, you know, if it's, if it's, because, you know, uh, Britain up until 1945 still had the occasional black person come over, or the occasional Indian, or the occasional yeah. whatever. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was still prejudice and stuff. But there wasn't the sense of existential threat amongst the native population that you get, say, today. You know, yeah. that sense of, uh, oh, I, I, it's not just like uh, uh, somebody who's a bit different to me walking around and who who is that and I don't know who they are. Now it's like I'm being replaced in my own country and that's much Yeah, dangerous. and that's, that's, the, that's the issue that I personally have as well. I don't like that. I think I'm glad that I am who I am. I'm uh, like, I come from a race that isn't pure. Colombians are not are not pure. They're they come from a mix of Black, Native American, and Spanish. That's all a mix. Of, that race in and of itself is how it is. But um, and I can't change that. That's that. I was miscegenated. I, I was miscegenated great grandparents ago. But that but that's also how new races come into be. You know, so oh, like God has a plan for that. that. You know what I'm saying? Because God wants diversity. So like there will be occasions when peoples come together and they will mix and they form a new race. The word Arab means mixed. Okay. Oh, I didn't know, you know that. So, yeah. So it's a, a mixed race people. You know, it's, and uh, they become a, they become an ethnicity of their own. So I mean, God is always diversifying people. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and God has a plan. But as long as we're following uh, God's laws and commandments in our societies and things, then God will take care of the rest. Okay, so you keep mentioning God's law, God's law. The thing is, mm. though, I think I am, as a Christian, a mid-acts dispensationalist. I I saw oh, some gravity. That. So a dispensationalist tends to think that um, everything earlier in the Bible is great to know about. It's interesting to learn about. But it doesn't, it's not talking to me until Acts, until the book of Acts. And mm. so um, I believe that we are ruled by grace. I don't really think the law, as you, as you say, um, is relevant as much anymore because um, the, your conscience is written on your heart. The, it says so in the book of Romans. And so the grace of God means that you are ruled by what the Holy Spirit grieves, it doesn't grieve. And so for someone that might be, you know, that white woman with that black man or that, or that, you know, Costa Rican woman with that Chinese guy, like if the Holy Spirit is in control or, or assisting you, how do you, how do you sort of um, do it? Well, you, you, you basically look at the text. I mean, that Jesus basically says, 
that he is not there to abolish the law but to fulfill it and not one jot of it not one tittle will be erased until the end of the world so the law is basically there to show you what perfection is Jesus well because yes there. it's a morally high uh, so moral it's, actual it's, life is essentially what it's, it's an ex it's, it's 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 so high that nobody not a single person can ever meet the entirety of the law and that's why you need God's grace. But it's still Absolutely. the it's still the standard. And the, the the purpose of grace is that no longer do we need to be disciplined by the law. No longer do we need to be like beaten around and punished for not following the law, if, which is what happened before Jesus came. But rather, once we have God's grace, because we are so grateful for being saved and having salvation and for basically for taking away our sin. It's a a, 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 a a physical horror to commit sin now. It's a physical horror to break the law. So we we are controlled by the the love of Christ and his sacrifice and the desire to be as perfect as him. And through the Holy Spirit, he gradually transforms us and gets rid of that sin. But nobody should be under any 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 doubt that what is sin is anything that breaks the law yeah absolutely okay, so, so 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 the law is is more is probably even more relevant for a christian um than it was for the ancient israelite because now it's like we have been given this get we have basically stood before the judgment seat and jesus has come along and said i have paid the price i have paid the penalty for that person's sin exactly yeah and so now to sin again after you know it's 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 a horrible thing to to even contemplate mm -hmm. when you were and also the fact that every day you wake up you realize there was a new sin that you committed that you didn't even know about yeah <laughs> you know? right it's, isn't it it is so that's what holds us it's god's grace that holds us in line but the the law still applies and especially the law applies for people who haven't accepted and repented and taken jesus into their life which is still a large part of the population so you know, we need the law to discipline uh, non-believers, and we need God's grace to transform the believer. Mm. So, I just have a question regarding um, what I touched on earlier, and that was that you said that there's a globalist agenda to mix up the, the races in the earth, and I, I think it would be mm. really, a, it's a really um, accurate observation. I'm not disagreeing with that in any way. But would you say that there was a time that um, that like the conservatism, the conserving of that was happening. I mean, miscegenation was illegal. Um, there's a movie called Guess Is Coming to Dinner. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And um, in, in some of the 50 states of the United States, just in the 60s, it was illegal to um, to do that. So wouldn't you say that at that time it wasn't a global agenda? So there was a time when it, when, when it was taking place. It was taking place in the wrong way. They were being a little hard about it but like do you understand what i'm saying it wasn't always yeah. an agenda right well the the agenda dates back to the kalurgi plan which is i think 1920 something so that that's where but it was illegal yeah but i'm saying like the, even on tv yeah but i'm saying where the origins of this plan come is obviously they didn't uh, okay the I didn't it. Say. it wasn't even meant to get yeah the guy didn't write the book and then all of a sudden it, it came to yeah. be My uh, it's really it's it's really the only uh, sort of after the Second World War where you get this Holocaust narrative that is then used to um, push for multiculturalism. And then, you know, sort of by, you know, there's still a lot of resistance. Around about 1970, they kind of get the, they really get the levers of, of power in the United States uh, more thoroughly. Um, as, as I said, as... As faith diminishes, the globalists have gained more control. So you go back to the 1920s, and most people still believed in God, still went to church, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. So it's really as the more that's diminished, the more they've gained the power to do the things that they're doing. Well, wasn't it Christians who were fighting for the right to be able to love someone black, someone Latin? You know, I would be on the back of that bus. You would be on the you'd be in the front part of the bus. No, no, no. I mean, because I said that the the problem, the problem, 
is segregation, segregation within a nation. That's the problem. So you're saying that it's black went back to Africa. Not that you're saying that specifically. You haven't said that, but as an example, that's separatism. So if the Mexicans went back to Mexico and then blah blah blah, and were Americans, why do well, Americans? You know, like how? how well, never, you, never, like, never, never mind going back. You know, you, you, United States. Right, of that that is, won't work. Yeah. Well, the United States of America is a is a is a big, big country. The the problem the problem is is you know like Indians had their reservations for a while, but then yeah. uh, the 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 greedy people decided that oh no we're going to get rid of the uh, reservations because we we want their land, yeah. um, but I mean that is the sin there wanting yeah. the Indians land the the, yeah. the the sin after the civil war um, isn't that blacks got uh, rights or didn't get rights the sin is the blacks didn't get their own country within the United States to run themselves. They right. they had a few they had a few towns. There was there was, you know, plenty of towns called Blacktown where they ran their own affairs for a while. Yes. But there were but there were evil people who decided that mm-hmm. wasn't good enough and they didn't want, you know. So but that is ultimately uh the ideal. The ideal is that um if you've got because of history, you've got a bunch of people who are mixed like Muhammad, like Muhammad Ali, okay, he doesn't want to go back to Africa because he, when he went back to Africa to fight George Foreman, he said, these people are nothing like me. No, he's American. Yeah, it's, he's beyond, like, yeah, it's beyond three generations, like the Bible. Yeah, says. yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's so, American. But he, but he also doesn't feel any any affinity with the with the white Christians. So no, because why he's doesn't? Yeah, but even just as a black man, you know, he he just didn't feel like he was part. He could ever be part of a country with white people. He much wanted, and Malcolm X was the same, saying, "We want our own land." So mm. you know, and same, you know, as we, we were talking about South Africa again, you know, yes, because Lawrence, if, if there had it, apartheid was the problem, basically two systems for two different people in the same jurisdiction. The, the whites yeah. shouldn't have had any control over the blacks, and the blacks should now have no control over the whites. Agreed. Because it's, it's, it's because it's exactly the same. Well, no, it's not. The white people were not were not gouging out their their intestines and boiling the children in hot water. The blacks are doing that now to the white people, so they've taken it to a, another level of evil. The whites were not kind. Well, they weren't. They, the whites set the barriers, but they were not being evil cruel like they were being mean but not evil cruel like murdering uh, uh, unless there are some stories and i'm not aware of where maybe that did happen but overall yeah. now um i would say well, you're taken to another level of evil and white people in south africa do not deserve the treatment that they're getting by the blacks no. by the government no. that's also allowing it see see the um god also teaches us that we are to evangelize all the nations and the, all of the nations and that all of the nations are under his authority. Right from the, mm-hmm. the moment when he had like only a few disciples, he said, all authority under heaven and earth is mine. So mm-hmm. Jesus rules the world. And so every Christian should be going out and making every nation Christian, you know, should be evangelizing the nations. So, you know, obviously um, South Africans failed in evangelizing the blacks properly. Yeah, that's probably, uh, yeah. you know. And that's why they're boiling white babies in oil, because that's what non-Christians do to Christians. Yeah, it's horrible. That's what they, that's what they were doing back in uh, in Caesar's day. And in oh, case anybody think, Nero, you know, Nero was doing it. Nero, too. yeah, Nero was doing it too. It's not like yeah. whites are uh, guilt free. It's, it's only, no, 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 it's only, for sure. It's only it's only God. It's only yeah. it's only Christianity that that puts an end to that kind of stuff. Do you think um, so, God? Do you think God cares about the the physical race of a person? Does He care more that someone, despite their nationality and race, is just saved? And Christian nationalism should be should be the way we go this forward. Well, God um, divided the nations uh, at the initially. Time. Yes, yes, in the yeah. time of of the Old Testament, I agree. And and, that is accurate. Yeah, and uh, God, uh, there's. There is also when uh, Jesus speaks to uh, the woman and the she says, "Come and uh, don't think it's at the well." Oh, okay. So it's not the Samaritan. Who are you thinking of? Yeah, the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman, and she basically says, "I've got a sick 
um can't remember the exact story somebody's sick and she asks for uh for healing for that person okay. and he says uh i didn't come here to uh, um for the dogs he basically basically calls her a dog. Oh. <laughs> yeah and she yeah. said and, and, the, and the and the woman the woman responds but even a dog can uh beg for crumbs at the master's table but when she humbles herself like that then he says your faith is great then he gives to the cure so uh anybody who thinks that jesus didn't care about race and didn't because you know it was a Canaan. i think he just cared all lives matter see jesus would be promoting all lives matter not not yeah but everybody 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 needs to submit to jesus that's the that's the well, first thing yeah, yeah really so like if you, if you if you don't if like people who don't you know it's like <laughs> he's got um you know until people are confess and believe then whatever happens to you is the consequence of your own sin uh -huh. um and yeah god wants everybody to he wants to save everybody but at the same time everybody has to put away their pride absolutely and and confess so uh but i i do believe that um god loves diversity true diversity i believe sure. he's made all of these creatures and other and, and you know all of these and within every species there is diversity so he doesn't wish i was aborted <laughs> no and I this is said it sounds like we wanted to say that loud. <laughs> sorry a as, weird sense of humor that's all as i said there is there is nothing wrong in god's eyes of um mixing race in and of itself but there is something wrong in not loving your own people uh the, and a we lot want to of, love our enemies that's hard and i have a few and i love them and that's hard yeah <laughs> as you know yeah keep working on it. keep praying yeah i will I do pray for them. It's hard, though. I don't want to, but I do because it blesses me later and blesses them. Yeah. But at the, um, at the same time, as I said, God God has got a, a, a God has got a, a, a civil structure by way that can be managed in a loving okay. way. And yeah. if we just followed that civil structure, we wouldn't have half the problems that we're having now. That's probably true. I would agree with that. Um, I want to, before we end, Lauren is struggling to get back in, so she'll sadly not be able to finish the conversation with us. Which is annoying because I wanted someone like that's literally black and white to to be in the conversation. And as you saw, she's she's not nothing we said offended her because she's very logical. Um, well, I nothing, wanted... not, no, no, nothing I've said is 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 hateful to her. So. No, I know, but if you said that to someone else who isn't a Christian and isn't logical, they might have found something to nitpick at. I don't know because of the no, well, of the know, I, 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 yes. I got I got I got attacked by a lefty the other day, so yeah, I got assaulted. So by um antifa or just a left uh, just a crazed lesbian person <laughs> i was uh i was i, I was i was I protesting lesbians I, I i was protesting the uh bringing the lgbtq agenda into uh the southwest of australia so i was standing outside a pub with a with a sign um uh, saying and she, yeah, and, and, uh, she got triggered and attacked me yeah well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so as you know, it's no secret that I've interviewed some very prominent white nationalists. Mark Collette was mm. one of them, Lana Lochtef. Um, and I've even interviewed some uh, black uh, nationalists. Now, my question, I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask it just for the sake of the audience. What do you, do you see a difference between supremacy and nationalism? Um, there is. Um, yes, I'm against all forms of supremacy: black supremacy, white supremacy, Jewish supremacy. Maybe Latino supremacy is okay, but all the others are wrong. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? Go elaborate, please. Um, at the moment, um, because the awareness of the problem is so small uh, for anybody who, uh, and certainly the courage to speak out about it is so small, I don't differentiate between them. 
Um, or wow, that, that's that's it... good. So supremacy just bad. No, no. I mean, I, 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 in other words, saying? like what I'm saying is is that um, I don't hold anything against the supremacists at the moment because it just it's just the movement is so small. They're speaking out about the problem. I'll work on their hate as I go with them. Okay, you know so you're 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 it's it's it's, it's you're like I'm, I'm, towards the hate because you think it's possible to turn them around on some level if like you're trying to evangelize to them. I I want them. I have hope for their salvations. I have hope for their souls. I want them to be. That's Christian. good. That's lovely. Um, yeah. And I understand where that anger comes from, and I can't, I I can't in good conscience, um judge them for that anger because that anger is genuine it's heartfelt it comes from a place of pain and sorrow it comes from a place of of threat and existential threat and so um so as another white person i'm not going to help them by going oh you're i i agree with you but you're 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 you're, you're, you're too you're too supremacy orientated that, that, that's just that, that's just a blowback uh from the position that people find themselves in today in, in oh. the white communities uh, sure. so i will obviously keep preaching to them that the answer is is to turn to christ mm -hmm. um absolutely but but to be able to do that i can't be i can't be judging them i can't be i i, I can't be dissing them i can't be i can't be punching right as they say i understand what you're saying i actually came to a conclusion not that long ago and i don't know whether you'll agree with me tell me if you think this epiphany is a good one um I'm happy to judge. I'm okay with judging. What I'm not okay with is condemning because I feel like that's that's not up to me. But it's as a Christian, yeah. do, does, does that make sense? Do you agree with what, yeah, that phrase theology? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a, be it's a better word than judge. Yeah, because you, yeah. you need to judge. You're right. I thought. Yeah, I, I came to that like literal definition um, epiphany not that long ago, and I'm like, Christians should be judging. Like, I will judge something that I think is wrong. Like people say, oh, I don't judge. I was like, well, do do you, do you let your kids hang around these back? It's no. Well, then that's a that's a judgment. You do judge. What you're not doing is condemning. Because I won't condemn yeah. anyone. That's up to God. Yeah, but I will judge. Good. I've had a yeah. an epiphany as well whilst uh, seeing me. myself on screen here. I, I've realised whilst seeing myself on screen here that I'm also mixed race. I am <laughs> I am I am I am, uh, I am white man and lobster. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. You know, those obviously those there was obviously lobster genes in in the in my past. So, <laughs> so there was some bestiality going on in the past. Oh God, I would say that. Yo, but yeah, um, I think that I think the issue with the supremacy movement is that people think that Mark Collette and Lana Lochte they think that they're supremacists when actually they're quite nice people, and what they're saying is it is it really that that evil but because it's shocking to the the current narrative uh i understand why people react to it because it sounds mean but it actually isn't mean and i've spoken to christians who black christians who you know him um don't necessarily disagree either and don't find it offensive so i think we need to condition people back into thinking um that you know, you don't have to agree with separatism, but this is actually what is meant by it. It doesn't mean you want them all on a noose. It doesn't mean that, you know, and I'm no civic nationalist, but I'm also no ethno-nationalist. I really don't know where I am on that. Um, I don't really fit into either camp. I really don't. So I don't know ideologically where I stand with that. Well, you don't really need to stay ideologically anywhere at the moment because it's not going to be resolved. In it's never reason. going to happen. No, no, no. Practically what, what, speaking, what, it will never what, happen. What, not, what, you, not what you want? What we want to all agree on at the moment is that mass immigration Christ. needs to stop. Oh, sure, uh, that's yeah. Mass mass immigration needs to stop. And in terms of supremacy as well, you know, um, I think that um, all of us, it's it's like, um, you know, it's like people who support a football team. Oh, you know, um, of course, you look at your own community and think it's better, you know. Because otherwise, why would you want to live in your own community if you didn't mm. think it was a nicer place to live in and people are nicer and better and generally all around, you know, superior? Sure. You, you wouldn't, you, otherwise, you would go and live in Japan if you thought Japan was superior and you'd want to become Japanese and you'd marry a Japanese person, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, you know, white supremacy, you know, well, yeah. You, when you're looking at, at the culture that you come from, obviously you're, um, you're 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 proud uh, and not in a 
in, in the biblical sense proud, but you're no, in, in like you, 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 yeah, you appreciate uh, the gift that your ancestors gave you and the culture that you inherited, and you and the uh, you you appreciate the, the the gifts that God gave your race. Cocaine you know? and hips not lying. Yeah. <laughs> is, that what gave, is that what God gave Colombia? <laughs> Cocaine. And and coffee. And coffee, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I'm I'm so And on the Spanish side, you know, conquering yeah. many, many, many places and plundering. Yep. Proud. <laughs> Stopping, well, that that's the uh, that's the leftist view of uh, the Spanish, you know. The, sure, the, yes. The other, well, I'm half half. The other side, the other the, the other side of the Spanish is 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 stopping um, human sacrifice. Right, and that's yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was probably the main reason that they were with, with just six hundred people they managed to take over the entire continent because <laughs> there were lot because there were lots of people waiting around going, if only we had a savior. Yeah, the Spanish. Well, this is the Spanish answer. arrived. Why aren't the I Spanish more successful? Arrived. Why aren't I more yeah. successful? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I think a bit of supremacy is is fine as long as it's in done in the the you know Fremantle Dockers versus West Coast Eagles sense of supremacy. Mm. You know, you appre you appreciate other cultures, but you you still believe yours is the best. There's nothing yeah, wrong with I that. I can understand what you're saying because it's not it's not harming anyone. Something that I always find unusual, though, is when white people say, um, "We look what we built, look what we've done," and I'm like, "Well, th mate, that was your, like 25 great grandparents ago. What have you built?" Like, I find it strange. Or like when black people say, "Look what you did to us, to the current white people who had nothing to do with what like the 25 greats." did in the past and even like even colombians and, and and the brits everyone does it look this is what we've done it's like okay but um are you are you your collective am i my collective i'm australian first generation australian i don't even meet the i don't even meet the biblical standard of being australian so i'm i'll i'll, I'll, I'll gladly say i'm first generation australian i'm happy to put ne it in that place well isn't you? neither do i no but you're white and you're a westerner and you and but I'm not an Australian. No, that, that exactly. Yeah, you're I actually, not an immigrant. I actually, I, I actually wrote an article. You're an immigrant. Uh, when I, uh, I wrote an article about um, uh, about the Book of Ruth and about the uh, the immigration situation. For where? And what, what, what publication? For X Y Z. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> and I basically that was a joke, Dave. That was a joke. I, I like you. Yeah. And, and in it, I basically, I basically said that I myself should not be allowed in this country under the mm. biblical law. I should, they shouldn't allow, have allowed me in the first place. But now That's that I'm not. here, technically, now speaking. that now now that I'm here, um, should biblical law be reinstated again, then I would have, have to, I would have to ask Honorate. the judici the the new judiciary that was uh, um, implementing God's law, mm. uh, or someone actually better, someone would have to appeal on my behalf i shouldn't be allowed to ask it myself to can he stay in this country and his descendants become australian and i should have no access to any positions of authority neither should my son neither should my grandchildren but my great grandchildren should sure yeah. by that day so it'll be like 150 yeah but i i'll be long gone but then if my if my children and my great and my grandchildren marry into Australian families, um, then yeah, the third generation should have citizenship, if and only if I am accepted in the new in the new Australia. That yeah. would be it would apply to me equally as it applies to you. I understand you know? what you're saying. So it's it's. Because Australia and England are now two separate nations. They're not the same anymore. We're similar, but we're not. They were the never the same. They, we mean, we may share the same royal family, but we were never the same. We always operated no, well, slightly. But, but, but in, the, in the beginning, you know, Australia was uh, an English colony, so it was British yes. people living, living here. But yep. those British people have now lived here, been separated from England for, you know, 100 odd years now, 200 mm -hmm. years. 
Uh, and so we're no longer the same nation. It's the same as Abraham and his descendants are no longer the, the same nation as his, as Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Lot. Yeah. Good old Lot, Abraham's cousin and uh, his uh, naughty daughters. Yes. Incest. Apparently it's the way to go in the Bible. No, just kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, exactly. No, that's fair. Um, I'm really disappointed that Lauren's internet wasn't working. How annoying. Uh, yeah. um, I thought it'd be my I thought it'd be my internet because it was playing up actually about an hour before you got me on, so Oh, okay. No, she's three hours away from um Melbourne, so um I could I don't know if that means anything. But um all right, well it sounds like um I think we've we've covered a lot of the topics that I wanted to, to, to talk about. So thank you so much for coming on the Don't Be Deceived podcast. This is episode six. And um, hopefully, when it's published, um, it will get people's. It will be thought provoking, and people will be thinking, "How how did you enjoy it?" I hated it. I hated every moment. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> no, no, it's no. Always, Thank you. Always, always a pleasure showing to you. Always, and I can't wait to visit Perth again and um, be an annoyance to you. <laughs> it's like, I look forward to it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the recording. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and all the links will be in the description box below. Mm -hmm.